So, Pokemon Emerald was released on the Game Boy Advance the same year Mother Nature released her liquid anger all over New Orleans. And despite how many old school fans of the Pokemon series will whine that Generation 3 was when they quit playing, and the fact that the Pokemon franchise in general was starting to show signs of decay around this time, I still feel like the GBA Pokemon games hold up pretty well. In fact, I consider Pokemon Emerald to be my favorite Pokemon game in the entire series. So, the story begins with you moving into a new town with your mom, who just throws you inside the moving truck along with her other belongings, giving Casey Anthony a run for her money. After you go through the obligatory tasks of choosing your Pokemon and fighting your main rival for the first time, you go back to the professor's lab where he gives you a Pokedex to help start your journey of becoming a Pokemon trainer, collecting all eight gym badges and eventually defeating the Elite Four in order to become the champion. It's not really until you get your first gym badge that the main story elements are introduced to the player, which involves Team Aqua, a group of eco-terrorists who want to wake up Kyogre in order to make the entire world an ocean, as well as Team Magma, a rivaling group of eco-terrorists who want to wake up Groudon in order to make the entire world land. Which sounds dumb on a surface level, but makes sense once you realize that both Team Aqua and Team Magma are crazier than the woman I met four years ago who ended up stealing my debit card to buy diet pills on Amazon. Kadasia, you lying whore. If you want to lose weight to feel more confident about your self-image, you need to stop eating all that graham cracker and start puking it out instead. Anyway, it's up to you to stop these idiots from destroying the planet as well as becoming the Hoenn League champion. Pokemon Emerald relies mostly on character interactions and optional pathways to progress the main story. This not only makes exploring every area you can feel rewarding, but it also makes obtaining items feel more realistic. Sure, it's not perfect, and there are some times even when playing it as a kid that I got lost due to not figuring out where to go next, but it's a lot more fun than what fans of Sword and Shield, or should I say consumers of Sword and Shield, will put up with. I mean, for fuck's sake, there is not a single original idea for the presentation or art style of those games. Because every building and environment just blends in without much variation. And exploring the Galar region itself is like traveling across a chutes and ladders board. Although, that's not really much of a controversial opinion, considering that when you ask the modern Pokemon fan what they enjoyed about the newer games compared to the older ones, they'll shrug off any actual criticism and say, it's Pokemon. And any inquiry regarding the hidden machines and puzzles of older games that made each region so fun to explore will be interpreted by them as a trendy new sex toy brand, or the title of some overpriced community theater performance perpetuated by nepotism enabling college students, who only enjoy writing stories that help further their political agenda, rather than basing them on actual life experiences or relatability. Every NPC you come across, whether it be a trainer you have to fight or a town resident, has something to say that gives the place you're traveling a unique identity. But there will be reoccurring characters such as your main rival who acts like a bitch but pretends to be quirky, your secondary rival who acts like the frail, hypochondriac kid in your neighborhood that your parents made you hang out with growing up even though you had nothing in common, your dad who looks like a shot of bourbon and a bad call from a Super Bowl ref away from grabbing the belt, a middle-aged man who scouts young trainers to see if they are talented enough to battle people on an island that he owns. Every emo kid from 2006, some old guy who went from being a renowned sailor to a hermit who enjoys his pet bird a little too much, someone who looks like he takes it up the ass, someone who looks like he gives it up the ass, and someone who looks like he enjoys watching. In addition to major side characters, you'll come across other side characters and notable NPCs who will give you useful items for completing side missions. The neat thing about this is that most of it isn't forced on you, which incentivizes the player to scope their surroundings, and find optional branching paths to help make their journey a lot more fun. Unlike the modern games, where exploring the overworld is about as pointless as Hillary Clinton trying to run for president. The overall theme of Pokemon Emerald's story is a subtle reminder that even in a socialist utopia like the Pokemon universe, where nurses heal patients for free and shops give away free modes of transportation, there will always be radical movements who will destroy the world under the guise of achieving progress. Eventually you do thwart Team Magma and Team Aqua by making them realize what they were doing was about as smart as licking the condensation from an AIDS needle that you found outside the West Hollywood soup kitchen. And once you fight the 8th gym leader, you make your way through Victory Road, defeat the Elite Four, and become the new Hoenn League champion. As far as the gameplay itself goes, at its core, Pokemon Emerald is a turn-based JRPG where you collect animals to use them in battle against others. 
just like my friend's uncle did before getting arrested, as all fence hoppers should. Every Pokemon has either one or two types, as well as base stats and a unique ability to shake things up. So, while you're going from point A to point B, you will constantly run into random encounters to catch the Pokemon you want for your team, battle other trainers who have a certain type of Pokemon depending on what type of trainer they are, as well as finding optional items by exploring every nook and cranny like a British soldier in heat. The battle system has an easy learning curve that's simple to understand but fun to master. Each Pokemon can learn up to four moves that have a set amount of uses before they run out of power points, which can be restored by going to a Pokemon Center as many times as you want. So, players who want to conserve as much move restoring items as possible like Aethers and Lepa Berries will want to utilize Pokemon Centers as much as possible before major battles. Personally, I'm the type of person who enjoys leveling up my team in RPGs as much as possible, so all of this is pure dopamine to me. Then again, I'm also one of those experience point schizos who will stay up all night and fully max out my character in any game anytime I get the opportunity. So that might just be a me thing. I'm sure most players will just casually pick out six or so Pokemon that they really like and stick with them throughout the rest of the game without much regard to their abilities and movesets. Although figuring out which abilities are good or not will definitely help. Alongside regular moves that Pokemon can learn by leveling up, there are technical machines, or TMs, which can only be used once but have the ability to teach Pokemon moves that they can't normally learn on their own, which adds some variety. There are also hidden machines, or HMs, which are moves that help the player clear obstacles, make areas more visible, or travel through pathways that couldn't be done otherwise. Just be careful when teaching a Pokemon HMs, because if you're trying to teach a Pokemon new moves, but want to replace a taught HM move with it, it's not possible unless you go to the move deleter. One of the things I enjoy about the mainline Pokemon games on the Game Boy Advance is how well the presentation has aged over time compared to Pokemon games on other systems. The graphics of Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow, as well as Gold, Silver, and Crystal are about as dated as my views on gender identity. And while some may argue that Diamond and Pearl looked better from a technical standpoint due to the more detailed sprites and 3D models for the buildings and such, the overall foggy presentation of those games looked like someone rubbed their fecal matter all over the screen after eating Circle K nachos. Plus, the frame rate and character movements feel about as slow as waiting inside the lobby of a medical clinic run by a bunch of boba tea sipping airhead millennials, who would rather gossip about how weird their patients are during their 20 hour work week more than actually do their job. In Pokemon Emerald, everything from the ocean waves to the battle transitions, to riding the mock bike feels so fluid because the sprites and backgrounds all look so crisp and vibrant. Plus, the game runs at 60 frames per second, compared to some of the other games in the Pokemon series which only run at 30. So to me, the way the Pokemon games look on the Game Boy Advance is what always first comes to my mind when thinking about the sprites of Pokemon games in general, because they're just so memorable to me. I also like how each town is themed around the environment that they're located in. Unlike other Pokemon games where it's just a group of houses lumped together, in one area, the Hoenn region has towns that are literally built around volcanoes, inside trees, on the surface of the ocean, and even underwater. Which makes sense in terms of the overall implied theme of the main plot, because whether Team Aqua or Team Magma succeed, their plans will basically destroy the foundation of certain towns, which will in turn affect the lives of citizens one way or the other. As far as the music goes, Pokemon Emerald does not disappoint. There are so many catchy tunes that even when I was playing it as a 10 year old kid back in the mid 2000s, I had several tracks stuck in my head. So all in all, it's not hyperbole when I say that Pokemon Emerald is a fantastic game. Sure, you can argue that the motivations of the main villains don't make sense, and people who have played Generation 2 beforehand might be disappointed about the lack of certain features, but overall it's a good time. And if you're playing this on an emulator, like I'm sure 99% of you are, you should check out the Pokemon Emerald Complete Hoendex Edition patch that adds newer sprites and quality of life improvements, which I'll make sure to have linked below in the description. So I hope you guys all had a good Christmas, and I'll see you all later. Peace.